Hello, everyone, and welcome to the I Didn't Know ClearPoint Could Do That webinar series. Today is all about sharing your results, aka the awesome work that you've put into ClearPoint. I'm Catherine, and I'll be your host today. So a couple of housekeeping announcements to start. We will be recording this session and we'll make it available online within a week. The webinar will last about 25 minutes with time for questions at the end. So submit your questions to support at clearpointstrategy.com and any that we don't answer at the end, we will follow up with via email. On our last installment, we covered ways to efficiently update your information in ClearPoint so if you missed that session, I'd highly recommend you check out the recording on the ClearPoint Live Vimeo channel on our blog, as well as in our support center. Just search webinar. And today, we're focused on sharing your results. So this is important to keep everyone on the same page about your strategic plan and your progress, and can be a great way to let stakeholders and citizens know how you're doing. Um, as far as our agenda, ClearPoint offers you a variety of ways to create exports and reports that we'll be delving into today. So many of you may already be familiar with creating briefing books, the clickable PDF reports that let you export multiple pages from within ClearPoint. And we'll be talking about some ways to customize briefing books to your organization's needs. We'll also show the various exporting options for individual pages in ClearPoint, including how to send a PDF straight to someone's inbox. Then we'll give you some tips and tricks for using ClearPoint during meetings and presentations, and we'll even take a peek at the world of online publishing. So that's what's on the agenda for today, and as I mentioned earlier, if you have questions, please send them to support at clearpointstrategy.com, the address that you see listed on the screen, and at the end of the webinar, we'll answer as many as possible. All right, let's get to it. So per usual, here we are flying the friendly skies at Upward Air, and we're going to go straight to the documents section, our central hub for importing and exporting. Many of you are probably familiar with briefing books, our clickable PDF reports, and they're a great way to export a collection of information to send out to your teammates, organization leaders, or even make publicly available. So today we'll take a look at some of the great ways to customize briefing books that you may not yet be taking advantage of. To start, we'll need to create a template on the Create New Briefing Book page. And briefing book templates are a great feature of ClearPoint. Instead of having to recreate a report over and over, you can simply generate standard reports with updated information month after month or quarter after quarter. So I'll go ahead and add a new briefing book template, clicking the plus icon in the top right. And the first thing I'll do is to give it a name. We'll call it our webinar report. And it's always good to give your briefing books a name that will be easy to reference later. So if you're creating a briefing book to share with your executive team once a quarter, um, it would be easy to call this briefing book a uh, quarterly executive report review um, so that you have a record of when you want to export it, and who your audience is going to be. That goes for selecting content as well. It's important to keep your audience in mind. So first, I'll determine the scorecards that I want to include. And for this book, maybe I'm just going to be reviewing my uh, corporate strategic objectives. So I'll click on the Objectives tab in our corporate scorecard and go ahead and check all to include. Now that we've got our content settled, Let's go back to the template tab where we named the report. On this screen is where you'll see the first customization option that we'll talk about today, which is adding a cover page. So adding a document here lets you use a cover page that's customized beyond the default title and table of contents pages offered in ClearPoint. So a cover page is a great opportunity to customize the look and feel of your report right from the very start. And you can also use it to provide some context and background information on your report as well. So maybe you're asking, is it really a good idea to put all of that information on one page? Uh, but you can actually pack more punch with a cover page than the name would suggest. And by that I mean it doesn't actually just have to be one page. As long as your cover page is in a PDF format, you can use as many pages as you need. So it's a great way to include some company branding and background on your report. We'll go ahead and add a cover page to our report. 
So I'm clicking over to Adobe here where you can see my two page cover page that I'm going to add. The first page is an awesome Upward Air title page that shows our smiling flight crew and a plane cruising into the sunset. And the second page gives us some introduction about the report and a high level summary of what is included. At the bottom, it also provides some contact information for our Upward Airlines performance management team so that report viewers have an opportunity to follow up on any questions that they have about the information included. So going back to ClearPoint, we can upload this cover page to our report by dragging the, the report onto the screen from our document finder on our computer, or we can just click this gray box to select a file. Once my file is selected, I'll click Open. And we'll see this message change here to PDF cover, cover template added, so that we can tell our PDF cover template has been added. And before we move on to making the rest of the briefing book look as awesome and customized as the cover page, I'll point out a few more features here at the bottom of this window. So here you can see you can include a watermark if you need. Just type the text that you want to appear as your watermark. And you can also select a larger page size, such as legal, if letter doesn't give you enough room. Down under report options, you have a few choices here, including a table of contents and the ability to hide some of the page features, such as the footer and page numbers, or the PDF navigation links, which are the icons at the top of the page that allow you to jump back and forth between the pages in your report. So you can hide those icons if you'd prefer them not to appear. I'm going to leave them in for now. And to continue the branding of this briefing book, I'll click over to the header tab. So these fields might be small, but they pack a punch. Um, the header and footer tabs allow you to match the styling of your briefing books to your organizational standards. So say we want to add a logo here up at the top of every page. I can use this HTML field to uh, click on the image icon and choose a file. So I have our Upward Airlines logo stored as a file here. So I'll go ahead and grab that. And this image is about 30 pixels tall. Keep in mind uh, that you're dealing with a page size report. So you want to be sure your logo is sized appropriately to use at the top of the page. And once this image is inserted, I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and use the alignment feature to align it to the top right so that this logo is going to appear on the top right of every page in my briefing book. Great. So now, because this is an HTML text field, we can even use a little bit of code to spruce up our header even more. If I click on this bracket icon, this is going to take me right into the source code. It looks a little scary, but I promise it's not. These tags here are the HTML version of a paragraph. So what you see uh, where it says style, with some information in quotations. This is called CSS, or a cascading style sheet. And it allows you to format what you're displaying here. So say I want to add a nice, clean orange line to my header. I can simply put a bottom border on this paragraph in the color that I want. And that CSS property is going to be border, bottom, right within those quotations. I'll follow it by a colon and then I'll specify the value. So I'm going to make this bottom border three pixels tall. The second component will be the style of the line. So I'm going to use a solid line rather than dashed or dotted. And then I'm going to enter the hex code for our Upward Airlines orange. And typically your development team or your communications team will be able to provide you those codes for your organizational colors and style sheet. So now we can click back away from the code and see that we've added a nice orange line to our header. The last thing we'll want to do is to specify a top margin to give our header some room. So I'll put in 25 pixels up at the top. And I know that this is just one example of what a header might look like. Uh, maybe you have some questions if you've never worked 
with HTML or CSS before, so you're more than welcome to always reach out to us um, to help get the custom header that you need in your briefing book. And clicking over to the footer tab, we can add an equally awesome footer to mirror this style at the bottom of the page. So you'll see that these fields here are just the same as the header tab, except of course, we'll be customizing the bottom rather than the top of our briefing book. So maybe I want to put a little note about what this report is so that it will show on every page. I'll go ahead and type Upward Airlines Webinar Report 2016. And then it's easy to use the icons here to edit your text without delving into the code at all. So I'll go ahead and highlight the portion that I'm going to edit. I'll use the alignment again to center the text at the bottom of the screen. Here we have formatting. I'll put my text in bold. I could even change the font if I wanted. And I'll go ahead and select a color to use a nice light upward airlines purple. Great. And again, uh, we'll go ahead and add our orange line using the code, but this time we'll add it as a top border so that it will appear above our content rather than at the bottom. And this way we'll have a nice clean line uh, separating our header and footer from the page content. So let's click back over to edit the code. Again, we're going to put our CSS property in between these quotations. And this time we're going to use border-top to place a top border. Again, this is going to be three pixels tall, a solid line, and we'll use the same hex code for our nice upward airlines orange. When I click back out of the code, I'm going to see my purple text and my orange line uh, ready to go into our briefing book. So say we, put, we preview the contents again, everything's ready to go, I can click save. When I want to generate a briefing book template and create a report, I'll simply click on the generate icon, choose my period from the window that appears, and click generate. Now I can click over to the briefing books page. And we'll see here a list of all of the briefing books that I've exported. Um, our webinar report is currently generating. I can tell it's in progress because I can't quite download it yet. But I actually created a copy of this report earlier so that we wouldn't have to spend any of our precious webinar time waiting for a report to generate. So I clicked on the download icon. This will take me right into the report in another tab. And here we can see all of our customizations. So it starts out with a great custom header, describing the report, giving some branding, a preview of what's to come. And then here at the top, we see our Upward Airlines header and footer on every page. So we've covered some briefing book customization. Um, an alternative to briefing books, if you'll be discussing your results in a meeting, is to simply use your ClearPoint account during your presentation. And there are a few tips and tricks that you can use in ClearPoint to make it extra meeting friendly. A simple place to start is the hamburger button in the top right corner. So clicking on this, you'll see that you've hidden the control panel. This gives you full range of the screen to explore your information, a little extra real estate, which is great if you've included a lot of information or columns in your reports and your detail pages. And one great benefit to using ClearPoint for meetings is that as you go through and review your objectives, measures, and initiatives, you can take down action items right in ClearPoint. So let's click on the initiative for redesigning our employee satisfaction survey. Here you can review the analysis and the description of the initiative, take a look at your milestone progress, and maybe as you go along, there are some meetings that need to be scheduled or other types of tasks to take note of. This is when we can double click on the action items field. And then click to add a new action item. So from this window, you can easily name the task.
assign accountability. So maybe we'll pick on Greg today. And then on the edit dates tab, you can assign the end date by which it should be done. Maybe we'll make that Halloween. When we're finished editing the action item, we can click save and see it appear here on this page with a checkbox for Greg to mark when it's completed. When we're done here, we can just click the blue X to edit the action item window. On the other hand, if you wanna make sure that no changes are made during your presentation, even by accident, this is when the lock button at the top of the screen comes in handy to keep everything in place. So the lock button was made for situations where you wanna temporarily prevent changes like a presentation, and that's why it's also called presentation mode. And this works in a couple of different places in ClearPoint. So let's click that lock button. And first you'll see that you can't double click into a field. So this will prevent you from accidentally entering into inline editing. And instead you'll see that toaster pop up letting you know that the fields can't be edited when ClearPoint is locked. Next, if I click into one of the top navigation dropdowns, I'll see that Manage reports and manage elements are hidden so that you have a nice clean view here showing your summary reports and your detailed pages. And lastly, the edit icons on each page have been converted to PDF export icons so that you don't accidentally click into an edit window. All you need to do to get out of presentation mode is to click the lock button again and this will unlock ClearPoint. And speaking of PDF exports, page exports are a great way to share your results from a single page in ClearPoint. So we have several options for exporting ClearPoint pages, PDF and beyond, based on the type of page that you're trying to show. For starters, every page in ClearPoint can be exported as a PDF, whether it's a detailed page or a summary report. And the PDF reports will show pages exactly as they are in ClearPoint. So let's click on the revenue measure. And we'll click into the menu next to the edit icon. And this will show all of your options for exporting and editing this measure. We'll go ahead and select export to PDF. We can choose a page size now for this export based on the amount of information we're trying to display and whether we'd rather see it in portrait mode I'll go ahead and leave it as is and click Generate. And in a couple of seconds, a new notification will appear at the top of the screen. We can click right on this notification to see our report. So maybe you're creating this PDF report with the sole purpose of emailing it to someone else. And look no further than our email page button, which will cut out that middleman of downloading the report, attaching it to an email, and sending it along. So here's our report here, as you can see. You have all those fields on the page. Now to email that report, I would go back into our edit menu and choose the email page option. Under recipients, I can select the email of any user in ClearPoint. So let's say I wanna send this measure to James Crockett to take a look. Uh, or I could simply enter the email address of anyone I wanted to send this to, regardless of whether they were a ClearPoint user. By default, the subject line is going to include the name of the page that you're exporting, and you can always change the subject to suit your needs. Then go ahead and type the message in the body field. And we'll, we can select a page size because as I mentioned, this PDF will be sent as an attachment in this email, so it will go right to their inbox. When we're through, we can click Send. And beyond PDFs, we do have other types of exports available, and we'll tackle those next. 
So while we're on the detail page here, if you want a report that just gives you the numbers for the measure, you can simply export the data table to Excel. And we live in an Excel-dominated world, so if someone asks for your report in this format, we've made sure you can easily get it to them without having to do much editing outside of SharePoint. And while we're on the subject of Excel, any summary report with a grid layout can also be exported in this format. So any summary report, such as the BSC view, balance scorecard view, can be exported to Excel since it has these rows and columns. I'll simply click into that edit menu again. I see that I have the export to Excel option available. And I'll click to create that export. So now that we've exported two reports here, let's go back into documents and click on the page exports page. This page shows you a list of the detail pages and summary reports that you've exported over time. So from here, you can always re-download those pages. And it's also a nice record just to know what pages you've exported from ClearPoint. So to view these reports, we can download them. And I have them pulled up at the bottom of the screen as well. So here we can see our data table from the revenue measure with each series and the period and status shown as a column in our Excel report. And we can also see the balanced scorecard view with our categories, objectives, measures, and initiatives along with their status. So clicking back into ClearPoint, we have one more export format to cover for individual pages and that is PowerPoint. So let's go ahead and click on the dashboard view. And this menu is going to give us the option to export to PowerPoint in place of exporting to Excel. So any dashboard type summary report can be exported to PowerPoint. And the dashboard format is going to display four charts per slide. If your report uses a dashboard large format instead, your charts will export one per slide. So this gives you two different options depending on how many charts you want to show in your PowerPoint. These can take a couple of minutes. So again, I pulled up this export at the bottom of the page. And here we can see every chart from our dashboard in a nice PowerPoint format. And then if you need to, you can even copy these chart graphics uh, to paste into other documents that you are creating. So beyond just exporting, I also want to cover your options for making information publicly available online. And that is HTML publishing. We hear a lot of people ask, can I publish my information to my website from ClearPoint? And the answer is a resounding yes. So you can, of course, always upload one of the file types that we've just mentioned above to your site to make a report publicly available. But more importantly, ClearPoint gives you the ability to export HTML reports. And HTML reports can be used on public-facing sites, intranets, or simply sent as a URL in an email to your colleagues, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So whether you're aiming to provide information publicly to stakeholders or citizens, or on your intranet to keep your, old, your whole team in line, published reports will have you covered. And they can also be embedded as iframes or simply linked as a full page. In order to get started, we'll first need to create a report template to export. So I'll click on the Create New Report page. So again, I can click the plus icon to add a new report. And you'll notice that this works very similarly, actually, to briefing books once we get into it. First, we'll give the report a name. We can specify the width of the report. And then we'll also need to provide a unique uh, part of the URL so that this report will have a unique link to be clicked on. So here we can see this has been added to our URL for our report. And this URL can be shared so that once your report is generated, um, you can simply click to it using this link. 
And each time you update your webinar report, your uh, HTML export, with new information, this link does not change. So all you have to do is regenerate uh, your report with a new period's worth of information in ClearPoint, and next time you go to your site, that will show your new information. So where it says to include top menu, this will give you the option of whether or not to include dropdowns like you see in the top navigation in ClearPoint. This is typically necessary when you're providing information in your published report from multiple scorecards so that you can jump from scorecard to scorecard. But if you don't include the top menu, you can use links within your pages uh, to jump from summary reports to detail pages, for example, um, and click from link to link. Next, we'll choose what to include in our report. So on the scorecards tab, We'll select which scorecards we want to pull information from, and then the content from each scorecard. So I'll just include the balanced scorecard view and a couple of our objectives in this report. Preview my contents, and then I can go ahead and click Save. Anytime I need to generate this report, I'll just click on the Generate button, choose a period, and click Generate. And now I can go over to the Published Reports page where I have a record of all of my published reports. You can see that older versions of these reports can no longer be viewed as a link and a live page. You can still download the HTML files as a backup. But the most recent version of your report will be available to view if you click this browse icon. You can see that a report is done generating when it's also available to download. And when you have those HTML files, they can simply be uploaded to your website's document route in order to display them that way as well. So while our report continues to generate, um, I've created an example that we can view. So here you can see this shows our balanced scorecard view, just like it would in ClearPoint. And then from here, we can drill down to a page to see our detail page information. So this is in a what you see is what you get format. You have a great sense from within ClearPoint what you'll be able to export as an HTML report. And then I could simply use this link to either send to my colleagues um, link to as a web page or embed in an iframe on my website. If you are interested in having a custom format for your public facing information, different from that format that you already have in ClearPoint, we're also able to do that. We can leverage ClearPoint's API, WordPress plugin, and Google Chrome extension to pull your ClearPoint information into a public facing custom website designed in WordPress to suit your needs and expectations. So here's an example of our Performance Metropolis dashboard. Um, all of this data is pulling from within ClearPoint and can be updated with a couple of clicks in WordPress to display the most recent information. We can drill down from this custom landing page to show information um, about the status of our measures, and then even drill down to see uh, charts and other information about the measure as well. So uh, using this format, you only need to update your information once in ClearPoint, and then you're able to pull it out publicly into a custom site. Uh, stay tuned as we are planning to uh, explore the community dashboard more in depth during a future webinar. But for now, we're reaching the end of our time here today, so I want to be sure to leave a few minutes for questions. And it looks like we've had one question come in, which is, to publish, is that still only available to a system administrator? Uh, and the answer is yes. Uh, for now, that is an administrator responsibility, since uh, taking your information live is something that your administrator should definitely be in control of. Um, so you know, if you're interested, if you're an administrator and you're interested in learning more about publishing, please don't hesitate to reach out to us after the webinar. And we have another question here, which is, on detail pages, uh, can I track information in ClearPoint without having to have it in my exports? 
So yes, every pod or field on the detail page can be hidden when exporting uh, pages of any kind from ClearPoint. So this allows you to track certain information in ClearPoint that you might not want in the report for a particular presentation or to display publicly on your website. So clicking into our revenue measure, I'll click on edit layout. And next to each pod, I'll see that there are some options that I can expand. And here you see three different checkboxes related to hiding this pod. So if you check off hide pod in print view, this is going to hide the pod from PDF exports and briefing book. Hiding the pod in online view will hide it from any HTML reports that you create. Um, excuse me, that's a hide pod when published is going to hide uh, the pod from your HTML exports. And hide pod in online view will hide the pod um, when ClearPoint is in presentation mode. So here, once we've checked off one of these options to hide the pod, I'll see a warning that the pod may be hidden in one of these different circumstances. I'll click to save this change. And then when I click the lock button, that variance chart is simply going to disappear so that during my presentation, I can focus on the information that I really want to show for that meeting. So that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you next time on the I Didn't Know ClearPoint Could Do That webinar. Happy reporting.